Here's another episode of the free BST Plugin Detective, where I review, test out, and demonstrate various free BSTs. And this one is the Ozone Imager made by Isotope. Isotope is legendary, legendary for making good plugins. And this is a free one, so you definitely gotta download it. Because if you hear that Isotope made a free plugin, you download it right away. You don't, you don't even ask questions because you know it's going to be really high quality. And this imager essentially is a... There's a lot of different functionality to this imager. This is a great imager. And basically what you can do with this imager is adjust stereo width on any element in your track. And I'm going to get to that and show you kind of how it's done. This is right off the bat, I'm going to say, for chair rating, 5 out of 5, amazing plugin. Now, this is a track made about Mardi Gras, which, quick side note, if you haven't been to Mardi Gras, you got to go. It's Unbelievable. I had a blast. Mardi Gras in New Orleans is amazing. I will say in the description, I have the full recap of when I went in 2018. It's about a 20 minute long video. So it's a bit lengthy, you know, but it's kind of filmed in a vlog style video. And you'll see all the partying, the music. Uh, I'll see, you know, decent amount of drinking, you know, here and there. Uh, but drink responsibly. Uh, and uh, the food, oh, the food was insane. Like everything. It, it's it's an amazing festival. And. This is a track obviously made to kind of commemorate it. Now, I'm going to show you different parts of this track that I made. And a little shameless self-promotion, but also it kind of it helps me lead into why the imager is so important for your tracks. So this is just the verse I'm going to play. On, baby, bring it down. I'm going to go here now. So this basically then goes from there and then builds up into this. So kind of like a jazzy, funky, almost like a little bit of a trap vibe too to that. And what I want to do is have the verses be very kind of simplistic as you notice here. You Not too much going on. And then when it builds up to the drop, I want the drop to be like powerful, like bam, you know, like hard hitting. And the Ozone Emir does this very well because a lot of times, especially if you listen to a really, really, really well-made song, the stereo width is very well controlled and adding more width to an element in your track helps it feel full circle and adds more, uh, I think it makes it a little more powerful. It adds a more powerful element that because of full circle it makes it be like, whoa, that's a you know hard hitting drop. Now, as you notice here, when I have drop, uh, I have a bunch of saxophone samples. I'm gonna solo this. And for saxophone, it's not, you know, a crazy intense instrument, right? But by adding more stereo width to a saxophone or any other element, it makes it feel more powerful. So now I'm going to show you the, the Ozone Imager, what it can do, and all the usefulness. There's many three different I find, uses for this plugin. Now, the first is obviously the vector scope. The vector scope helps you look at the stereo width of any element. You have plus one and minus one here. Uh, I would suggest watching a tutorial about stereo width and the true scope of it. Obviously, for these tutorials, I don't really like to... Uh, excuse me, for these videos, I don't really take, like them to be a tutorial of me explain things. I more like to review the plugin. I know that's why a lot of you watch these videos. It's like, okay, I know a lot about music. I just want to know if the plugin's good or not and what I can do with it. So, I do suggest watching a couple YouTube tutorials, and there's some great ones about stereo width. Uh, but anyway, so obviously, you have your vector scope here. You have polar sample, polar level, and Lisa Jouse. I never know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'll see. You know, there it is. So, when I solo this... You can see the stereo wet here, right? Pull a sample. And Lisa Joss. Obviously, this is clipping a bit, as you can see here. But, obviously, I'm doing this for video purposes. Now, in terms of stereo width, if you think of a speaker, think of it like a circle. You have the middle, and then you have the sides. So, what we do now is play the same sample that I just played you. As you can see, there's no width. I turn the width off. And I'm going to raise up the width of the saxophone. You notice that it sounds more full circle. And you'll notice even too on the polo level, because I think it's a good vector scope, of how it gets wider. So ready? Sounds more full circle now, right? And you can see here, you see now there's more width to it, right? So I'm going to play this. And you'll see if I do this. Now, there's no width, right? Maybe a little bit here and there, but now if I do this, man, you have to, like you're with now, right? So like I said, the first thing you do is vector scope. This is very good. Uh, like I said, I do suggest watching some tutorials on stereo width to kind of see, okay, how is my stereo width intact? Is am I doing too much, too little? What should I do? That's the main first thing of this plugin that's really great. Just to even look at this, even if I don't use width or stereoize, 
it's still good to kind of see on a vector scope. Second thing is also do width. Obviously, I was just doing that a little bit. I could show you. And you can do two different things with the width. You can either boost it or you can decrease it. Now, a lot of free plugins that do kind of steer width and kind of um, imaging just boost the width. But it's very useful sometimes to decrease it. So as you notice, once I'm with 100, it's crazy stereo stuff, right? As you can see. But like I say, I'm doing it for a small element in my track. And I'm like, you know what? I don't really want this element to be super wide. I kind of want it to be very narrow. It's kind of in the background. I don't want to kind of mess with the mix too much. I can take this all the way down. So you notice a huge difference now when I go from here to now here. Right? Super na narrow now. Look at that. Just super, super narrow. So that can be very useful. If like, you know what? I don't want this stuff being super wide. It's going to mess with my mix. You can completely take out the width. And that's a great, great part of this plugin. I think it's very underrated. When I've seen some other reviews of this plugin, they talk about how it's really good for adding width or the stereo eyes. But they don't really talk about how when you decrease the width, that's a very, very, very good tool to kind of make it more centered in your mix. It's not affecting any other element in your mix, and especially if it's a uh, if it's a sample that you don't really care. It's in the background. You don't really care that much about it. Dropping out the width can make it a little easier for your mix overall, especially in the vector scope. So now I'm going to put this here. Now the stereo eyes is very, very useful. Not as useful in this case because also this is stereo, but let's say you have a uh, certain sample that is just in mono. What you can do is turn this on and it will take that mono element and turn it in and make it stereo. So I don't even think you hear a difference at all, to be honest. Uh, let's see if it does do this actually experiment. Yeah, so you're not going to really hear it because this is already kind of stereo anyway. Um, uh, but what stereo eyes can do is, let's say you do have a mono element, right? So it's not in stereo, it's in mono. You can basically make it stereo and boost the amount. I will say when I have used this in my productions, for stereo eyes, you have to be careful. I find it, you, it's very easy to do too much and it starts sounding very weird. So I do suggest that when you do do you stereo eyes, I kind of use, you only sometimes even do just a little bit, sometimes even that, sometimes even just this, just to put it in stereo. And then as opposed to adding more stereo eyes to it or adding the amount more, I increase the width. So I only do this a little bit just to put it in stereo and then I boost it up as opposed to winding it like crazy using stereo and all that kind of stuff. But anyway. Uh, no, I'm rambling on a little bit. Uh, but essentially, that's the plugin. Super useful. Also, I know there was a lot of the things I kind of talked about in this video in terms of Mardi Gras. <laughs> got kind of sidetracked. And, you know, all these different elements. But as you can see, stereo width and basically just understanding mid and side in your production is a very useful thing. Obviously, well beyond the scope of this video, I do suggest watching tutorials. But if you are looking for a great imager that you can, like I said, one, adjust in terms of increasing and decreasing width. Two, basically turning your mono elements into stereo, and three, having a good vector scope to see, you know, the full spectrum, you cannot go uh, better than the ozone imager, especially being free. And like I said, when it's made by Isotope, you know that not only is it going to be a good plugin, but the functionality and the algorithms that it's going to be using are going to be top-notch, and that's exactly what this plugin is. So definitely check it out below. Obviously, like I said, I have three different things for you in the description. I get the free download for this plugin. Second thing I have is obviously a link to this track. You'll check out my full track of Mardi Gras. And third, I'll see the vlog of me partying it up uh, when I when I went to Mardi Gras for 2018. Such a good thing. So all those good things, definitely check them out. I have all this below in the description.